Okay, so here we've got our first problem, um, and um, to find the um, integral of sine of 2x, this one is, is an easy one to do, and you can um, probably do a, a quick sort of guess and check with this one, but uh, we're gonna we're doing uh, integration by substitution, so we're gonna do that. So remember that the basic strategy is that you're gonna substitute um, typically, almost always, whatever the inside of your function is. So here, for example, I'm gonna let u be equal to 2x. Now it might be not might not be 100% clear right now why I chose 2x, but uh, with practice it does. So um, then once you have that, you find uh, what du is. And so this is basically the derivative of u. And then, actually let me use the same color. So du is 2, the number 2, and then dx. Okay, now, um, then uh, remember what you do is you, uh, what you want to make sure is that you want to have the integral and then you want to have a du in there and you don't want to have any more x's so all of these x's that you have in here have to be turned into u's and so you already have um, sine of u so that's okay that's good but now I just put this du here and I really shouldn't have because dx doesn't equal to du, right? du is equal to 2dx. And so what that means is that you, you look at this and you go, okay, so this is u. I need a 2dx so that I can turn it into du. So what you do is you, um, you put down whatever number it is that you need and hopefully it's just a number. If, if you just need a constant, for example, I just need that 2 there, you can uh, multiply by 2 as long as you then on the outside divide by the same number. So if I multiply by 2 and then divide by 2 on the outside, that isn't changing the problem. And so the reason why I, I did that is because then this is equal to du and so then what I have is this is equal to one half the integral of sine of u du. So basically you're looking to get du in here and get rid of all of the uh, x's. Um, and then once you have that then you can just get the antiderivative as normal. So the antiderivative of sine is um, negative cosine of u and then plus c and and then what you do is you go back to what u is equal to so this is negative one half cosine of u was equal to 2x and so then uh, and then plus c and so then you're done now um, some some students don't really like this part right here, you know, doing the uh, du and the um, looking for the du part. Um, there is another alternative. I I don't really like it as much, and I'm not going to be doing it for the rest of the problems. But another option that you can use is let's say for example I'm going to rewrite the problem again. This is just another option. You might you might like it better. Um, and what you do is you do the same thing. So u is equal to 2x, and then du is equal to 2dx. And so then what you do is you solve for dx. And so you say, OK, well, dx is equal to du over 2. And so then you can switch this one for du over 2 instead. And then this one, of course, would equal to u. And so then the integral would equal to sine the integral of sine of u and then this would be du over 2 and so notice this is the same you can take the 2 outside and that would be exactly the same as this one so it's really up to you okay now let's do another one let's say we have the integral of t cosine of 
t squared dt. Now this is a classic integration by substitution. Because what you're basically looking for, remember, is that you want to pick your u so that the derivative of this u, the derivative should be um, in the integral as well. That's your that's your big key. Now it doesn't always work that way, but more often than not, that's what you're looking for. You're looking to pick u so that its derivative is inside of the integral. And I'll just put in parentheses. Forget about the constant because as we just saw in the first example, um, you can put in constants whenever you feel like. Okay, now. Um, once we have that, we go, okay, well, notice that, let's say I let u be t squared. Notice that its derivative is 2t. So just like what I just said, let's forget about the constant t. Notice there's a t right there. And so don't forget the, the dt. And so basically what you do is you go, okay, well, this is u, right? And so then you need a 2t dt in here. Well, you have a t dt. You have t dt. So all you need is that 2. And so you can multiply by 2, divide by 2. And that means that you're going to have, whoa, yellow. That's not a good color. OK, 2t dt. These two put together are equal to du. And so then this is equal to 1 half the integral of cosine of u and then uh, du, right? Because the 2t and the dt turned into du. And so then you can find the, uh, the antiderivative here. This is 1 half sine of u plus c, or 1 half sine of t squared plus c. And that's it. OK. OK, so this is another one where um, it's not necessary to do integration by substitution, but it's good to go through the motion. So. Notice there's nothing else going on besides sine of this uh, inside right here. So, um, but notice that if you let this be u, the derivative of that is just the number negative 1 dt. And so whenever du is just a number, then you have no problems getting uh, du in, inside of your integral because this um, all I need is to multiply by negative 1 on uh, the dt, and then I can just multiply on the outside by negative 1. And so this is going to be du. And so this is just equal to the integral minus the integral of sine of u du. So this is equal to cosine of u plus c, right? Because the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine, and I have this negative sign right there. And um, this is just equal to cosine of 3 minus t plus c. But you probably could have done that one by guessing and checking. OK, so now things are starting to get interesting. Because here, you know, you have two choices. Do you pick? u to be sine of theta? Do you pick it to be sine cubed? Do you pick it to be cosine? And so, you know, a lot of times what it, what it is is until you get very proficient at this, you know, you try something and then if it doesn't work, you try something else. But um, if you keep the two uh, basic strategies in mind, the first one being that whatever you pick u to be, its derivative should also be inside. Um, and that u is typically the inside part of a function, then you can pick the right one. So notice how picking cosine, for example, would be the wrong choice because the derivative 
of cosine is negative sine. But you don't have a sine. You have sine cubed. And so, you know, this could take you down a path of, uh, you know, going around in circles quite a bit. And um, so notice that it, it makes a little bit more sense if you pick u to be simply sine. Because see, notice that it's, this would give you, um, if u is equal to sine, then this would equal to this part right here would be u cubed. And so that makes more sense that you would have the cubed as, uh, you know, outside of the whole uh, derivative and, and all that stuff. So, um, and notice that the derivative, when you get the uh, derivative of sine, that's just cosine theta d theta. That's exactly right there, du. So, you know, it looked crazy difficult, but in reality it wasn't because now all I have is the integral of u to the third du. And to find the antiderivative of this, this one's easy. I just use the power rule now, u to the fourth over four plus c, which is then equal to u is equal to sine, and then to the fourth over four plus c. And that's it.